everyone and welcome back to the Botanus Garden Club. I'm Pam and I'm Wendy and we're so glad you've joined us again today to talk about dahlias. Yes, dahlias. Ooh. You know, uh, Wendy, my family has had a love affair with dahlias for many years. Uh, my Oma and Opa had a beautiful home in Carisdale in Vancouver and I remember as a child being in the backyard in the summertime and all along the fence oh, wow. were these beautiful dahlias in bloom midsummer and all the way into the fall. Kind of rubbed off on my dad, he loves dahlias, so does my mom, they grow many different varieties every year so it really is a family That's affair. Nice. And I think the love comes from the variety. Oh, I absolutely. mean, as you know, there's just yeah. all different shapes and sizes. Well, you know, I didn't necessarily grow up with them because there were seven kids and our garden had to be very serviceable. So mm -hmm. we did do other things during the springtime with the daffodils and things like that. But when it came to dahlias, I don't think my mom really knew about them. Mm -hmm. So my love affair began when a, my girlfriend Sheila grew some beautiful big dinner plate dahlias in the mm -hmm. backyard and I had never seen anything like it. This was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And I believe the one that she grew was called Ferncliff Illusion. Mm -hmm. And this was something so magnificent. The flowers were like this uh, big around. Mm -hmm. Beautiful white with these kind of uh, beautiful fuchsia pink tips on them. And it grew to be very, very tall. I know now mm -hmm. that they can get to be about 55 inches tall. Like how amazing is that? Yeah. And Sheila, what she did when she planted her dahlias, she would actually stake them right at that time. Because it's no secret, if you've got something growing that tall, mm -hmm. you're going to want to stake it. So while she was planting, she would set that stake right in, so as not to have to do it later on when the roots were all established and right. make a mistake and stick it where it shouldn't be stuck. And then she would gather up twine or whatever it was she needed to keep the leaves and things from sort of falling down. Mm -hmm. Because we do get a bit of rain in the season, yeah. and if that hits that giant head flower, it's going to give it a little bit of a, you know, a toppling over yeah. effect. So that was uh, something that I learned from her, mm -hmm. but that was when I fell in love with them. I yeah. thought there, I'd never believed from such a small little tuber for such a decent price, mm -hmm. you could get these beautiful big flowers. Yeah. And I think, you know, you touched on one thing that I have a feeling perhaps people shy away from dahlias because they think, oh, they're a lot of work. I have to stake them and they're not winter oh. hardy, so I have to lift them. <laughs> and uh, really, truly, they aren't a lot of work. I mean, no. yes, some things do require staking. Not all dahlias, just the ones with the big flower heads right. that potentially grow quite tall. But in terms of lifting and storing them, which means you, in the fall, after the first frost, which right. depending on where you live in Canada could be somewhere in October, somewhere in November, uh, you will have to lift them and store them if you want to plant them the following season. Easy now, enough to do though. Totally I mean, you take easy. a pitchfork, mm -hmm. you go around, you loosen the soil, and then you bring up that beautiful right. root, mm -hmm. wash it off, mm -hmm. and then you take it and you store it. You don't have to separate it at that time. In fact, it's better to separate it in the springtime right. when you can see the new little shoots starting up. So once you've taken it out and washed it off and let it dry for a right. little while, you stick them after they've been well marked, you've mentioned yes. that a couple <laughs> of times, well mark them so you know what it is you're actually packing away. Mm -hmm. And then slip them in some cardboard boxes with all sorts of torn up newspaper, shredded mm -hmm. paper, and then set them in a cold but frost free place to spend the winter. Right. And check on them. That's yes. all you need to do. Mm -hmm. Maybe once, you know, at the most, maybe twice during the winter season. You know, go in, dig around, have a look. Make sure they're not soft right. in any places. Mm -hmm. If they are, something you can do if you have a little mark or a blemish and you think, oh, that doesn't look very good, cut it off with a nice, clean, sharp knife, sprinkle some cinnamon on it, which right. is a, a very good antibacterial uh, method to use, mm -hmm. and then put them back in the box. Right. And, you. of course, your other option is if you don't want to carry them over until the following season and replant them, just let them go. Yeah. Let them go. I mean, treat them as annuals. People spend a lot of money every year Isn't on hanging true? baskets yes. full of annuals. Dahlias are not expensive, so if you're not concerned about doing all that work, you just don't want to bother, but you want to have flowers all through the late uh -huh. season and into the fall. Big bunches of them. Yeah, <laughs> just, just let them go. Yeah. So, a great thing to try, and we definitely want to encourage you. Now, we have, of course, chosen a few mm -hmm. of our favorites. One you lightly touched on uh, earlier was that fern clip illusion. Yes. yes, and that's one of the dinner plate dahlias. Really give it a try. Take a look in the catalog and see the color. All that white with just the tips frosted in that beautiful darker pink. Mm -hmm. I love that. So yeah. I probably already said enough about it. Yeah. Earlier. And, <laughs> and the flowers being so large. Yes. Well, one that I really love, and there's two reasons why I love it. It's the Kenora Macabre. 
First reason, I love that color, you know, yeah. dark, dark burgundy, beautiful dark color, uh, something you don't normally see in a dahlia in a solid color like that. But what I also love is it's a fringed. I love fringed dahlias. Uh, <laughs> they look so spectacular. They look like they're having a bad hair day. <laughs> or a party. <laughs> or a party. They just look fun. Yeah. Uh, it looks like someone has gone around with a little pair of scissors and just snipped all the tips of the petals. So it gets this really sort of sprayed look. Really fun to grow. You could grow a clump of them by themselves oh, or if you really want them to stand out I would suggest planting them with a lighter color mm -hmm. of dahlia or another blooming um, plant like a like a lily or something that would be blooming later in the season to great really idea. make them pop but Canora macabre a great choice good choice and you know it's not like they're small blooms on those ones either they really are quite substantial in mm -hmm. their in their own right Another type of dahlia that we carry are the border dahlias. Mm -hmm. They're called border or patio. The big difference with them is they're shorter. Mm -hmm. So they'll be 20 inches, 24 inches, but they're not very tall. They will probably not require staking because they're not going to get that tall that right. they require it. The one that is uh, my favorite is called Final Star. And I, I love it because it's got lots of purple and white and it's just a real mass and a mixture of color. Mm -hmm. The beautiful thing about these shorter dahlias is you're going to get this short growth and you're going to get just a mound of flowers. You will be so shocked at how they may take a while to get started, but the minute that greenery comes up, mm -hmm. it is up, it is getting ready, and then it is blooming one after the other. Right. So there is a lot of bang for your buck when it right. comes to these ones, and it's a beautiful little one to sort of line the front of your garden. Yeah. So if you've got any borders, that's perfect. It's a great cho choice too, rather. If you're an urban garden gardener with a very little oh. garden, or maybe you only have a balcony and you want to grow some dahlias and you don't have room for larger pots to <laughs> accommodate the height, these are great for that because you can put them in containers like many bulbs. You know, great easy idea. to grow, easy to store. You could even actually, you know, you could take that whole container and just move it to a frost-free area during the winter and then repot it the following spring. So if you're an urban gardener with limited space, look at the border That's a dahlias. great, great point because then you can actually get out in your deck and enjoy it because it won't be yeah. over, overcome with these giant flowers. That's right. Good. Now, my choice, the last one that we're going to talk about, is a novelty dahlia called night butterfly. Mm. Oh, Wendy. I saw it growing in yeah. Wendy's garden a couple of summers ago and it is so, so much going on. So much going on. Yeah. So pretty. It's actually uh, the variety. We, we list it under novelty and all the novelty dahlias have something special going on. But the true um, hybrid variety is a collarette dahlia. Oh, very cool. Yeah. And so it's a collarette because it creates a collar of, of flatter petals on the outside, but then it's got all this jazzy stuff going on in the middle of the flower. Really, really pretty. Again, in those tones that, that I like, kind of like the Kenora macabre, dark oh, burgundy, yeah. mm -hmm. but with an offset of white and a little bit of yellow. Oh, just beautiful. And, and flower uh, after flower after flower. Oh, it just kept producing. Yeah. And that's the great thing with the dahlias too, is that if you're a snipper, if you like to cut those flowers <laughs> and bring them inside, dahlias are the perfect plant because in fact, the more you snip, yeah. the more you get. Yeah. And that's a real bonus with dahlias, especially pushing that season. You know, Absolutely. in Canada, we have such a, a limited growing season. So why not squeeze out as much as you can out of your garden, especially in terms of flowers, and you can do that with your dahlias. Yes, and you know the farmers markets are full of dahlias at the end yeah. of the season, aren't they? And you can pay huge money mm -hmm. for a bunch of dahlias, and I just look at them and think, well, I had that and like double and triple mm -hmm. for just a small amount it cost yeah. me and the the seriously no no worry no fuss planting mm -hmm. of these lovely little tubers so definitely do yourself a favor and let this be the year you go crazy and enjoy dahlias plant them and really have a lot of fun i, I think this is the year yeah i think it's a good time to try them if you haven't and yeah. if you're already a daily lover gosh we don't need to yeah. convince you but we have <laughs> lots to choose from in the catalog and online under the dahlias have a look and uh, choose your favorite. And There's definitely that, something for everybody. Yeah, that sure. sort of leads us to the question of the yes. week. We would like to know what your favorite dahlia is. Now, we've told you a couple of our favorites today, and it may be something that we carry, and it may be something that you've grown and you absolutely love, so let us know what it is. Maybe you'll see it in our catalog. Yeah. So send your answer to that question to gardenclubbotanis.com, and we're going to do something special for mm -hmm. three. Three people.
three Botanus gift certificates in the amount of $10. And of course, you can spend that gift certificate whenever you want. You don't have to spend it this season. You can save it for the fall season, or you can spend it next spring or the it's year after. Good. They're limitless. So, um, And we have given away quite a number of those $10 gift certificates, and people are using them. Yes. So please do send us your answer to that question. Join in the fun, and you yes. might just be one of the lucky winners. Keep your fingers crossed for you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us again. We love what we do. We love presenting all sorts of interesting things for you, the gardeners of Canada. And we thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next week in the Botanist Garden Club. Until then, happy gardening. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.